Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebi. Today we're going to be talking about ruler work for your domestic sewing machine. I did a video about a month or so ago about using ruler work for your long arm, but it also can be done on your domestic so that way you can finish your quilts at home. Um, just like the long arm one, I really like ruler work because it makes me look better than I am when it comes to quilting because you are always going to be in contact with a template that's going to help you quilt super straight lines so you can absolutely get this down and create some really pretty quilting with it. I'll show you some examples of some quilts that I've done with ruler work um, while we're chatting about it, but there are a few things that you need to get started. The first of them is a ruler foot. So it looks like this. We've got clear ones available at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It has this circle around it. So that way, when it is in contact with your ruler, no matter where you are with that, it's always going to be exactly a quarter inch away from your needle. So that allows you to create really stunning designs with not a lot of effort, which is great. So you need to know if your sewing machine has a low, medium, or high shank. The shank is the part that this attaches to on your sewing machine. A good chunk of domestic sewing machines have low shank um, options, but some of them have uh, medium and some have high. So just check your manual with your machine manufacturer to see which one you have, and then you can order these from us over there. Actually, everything you see here you can get from us, and if you like these free video tutorials, we appreciate it. If you want to give this a go, if you get the supplies from us, because it helps support us and helps us be able to bring you free quilting tips and tricks every week. All right, so you're also going to need some rulers, and these are thicker than your standard rulers that you use to cut fabric with. It's about a quarter inch thick and that's so that it will fit nicely. It's about the exact same height as this ruler foot. And if it were shorter, then this might pop up and go on top of it and you hear crunching acrylic and that's not a good sound. So you want to get one that's specifically designed to work with long arm or your domestic. And the ones that I'm gonna to use today for the domestic are the Slim, designed by Angela Walters, available from Creative Grids, they're the ones who make this, and Elvira. I like these for the domestic. I, my favorite hands down ruler for ruler work is Natalia Bonner's 4 in 1, but I feel like that one is a little too big to work on most domestic sewing machines. If you've got a sit down mid arm or you've got a ton of throat space, then you can use that one. But if you're working with something like a real basic model and you're also trying to get your whole quilt underneath there, you want something that's a little bit more compact. And so Angela has, I believe, eight of these out right now. We have all of them, but if you just wanna give it a try, I would go with Slim because you can do your straight line quilting with it. And then Alvira because you can get some nice curves in your piecing with that one. And between those two, that'll give you enough to give it a try. And then you can add a few more as you go. And if you like this, I'll do demo a few of the other ones too, because we have them all at the shop. So the reason why I like these is they have both white and black hash marks on them. So whether you're working with light or dark fabric, you're gonna be able to see the lines. And also they've got grippy stuff on the back. So it's going to stay put like you can see, my entire fabric is moving and I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on the ruler. And when you do this, you are moving the ruler, you're putting it in place, and then you're moving your fabric. So that's really important. You don't want it to slide around. Um, same thing with this one. You can see the black and white lines and it's got the grips on the back. I also highly recommend that you have a pair of machiners quilting gloves. I like them because they're pretty lightweight and breathable. So if it's a hot summer day or you have your own personal summers, um, these are still good. You can still use them. And then they've got little grippies on the fingertips that help you move everything around. And really, I like to use these friction gel pens anytime I'm doing ruler work because then I can mark things and it will go away with heat. But for today, I'm going to show you just some exercises that you can do at home with a fat quarter. And you can just grab, solids are great because then you can see everything really clearly. But if you want to just grab some fat quarters that you regret buying, this is a really good exercise for that because then you can just give it a try and then it's just a practice piece and you don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm using black today. We have three different colors at the shop. And I know sometimes people poo-poo these because they say that 
the lines come back and they do if they go out in freezing temperatures. But I have a quilt that has traveled all across the country that I marked the heck out of with these because I did ruler work across the entire top and I haven't heard any complaints yet. And if it does ever come back, all you do is iron it again and the marks go away again. So you're good to go. All right, well, let's get started. So the first thing we want to get down is just to quilt a straight line. And you can get a lot of angles going with this, but to start with, let's just work on quilting a very, very straight line. So what I'm gonna suggest that you do is make a mark two inches from the corner of your test piece. And what I did was I just took a half yard of fabric, folded it over and put some scrap batting that was left over from a quilting project in the center. Let me put that a little bit darker so you guys can see it at home. So I've got a line there, and then I'm gonna mark a line two inches down from that as well. And any marking tool will do. I just like these because they go away, and then you're just gonna see your quilting, which is kind of fun. Um, and then also if you get off a little bit, no big deal, no one knows that you were off. So that's always fun. One thing I didn't mention, but is super helpful, is if you have an extended base for your machine, that's going to be ideal, is you need to be able to have your hands on here and your ruler, and that needs to be able to lie flat. So if you can do that and get that going with your sewing machine, that's ideal. Otherwise, it's just gonna be hard to keep everything nice and flat while you're working. You also wanna make sure that you lower your feed dogs. On mine, there's just a little thing in the back that I just push down and then they lower because you are gonna be the one who's moving your fabric around, not your feed dogs in this case. It's kind of like free motion in that respect, but in others, it's very different. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring my thread up to the top, just like you would with free motion quilting. You wanna bring that bobbin thread up to the top. Now it's not super important on a test piece like this because it's just a test piece. It's just an example to see how things go, but you wanna get in the habit of doing it so you don't have a whole mess of thread underneath your quilt. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line up the ruler so that it is exactly even with the edge of my ruler foot there. And then I'm gonna hold that in place and I'm gonna start moving everything. When you do this, you kind of got to get your rhythm in order. So you want to get the sewing machine going at a specific speed. You may need to do some tension adjustments. I definitely do on mine. All right, so I finally got my tension. And just so you know, if the bobbin thread is poking up through the top, then that means you need to decrease your tension. If it's poking down through the bottom, then you need to increase your tension. But what I'm doing here is I am just holding my ruler and my fabric, and I'm just pushing those along, and I'm making sure that my ruler is always in contact with that ruler foot. And if I do that, then I'm going to be able to make a nice straight line. So for my second stitching line, I'm gonna go ahead and put my ruler to the right of the ruler foot. Now, to me, that is more awkward. You do kind of have to get used to having the ruler going in different places, but I'm gonna put it on the right so that way you can see a little easier how the ruler foot is always gonna be in contact. And the other thing you wanna know is there's kind of a sweet spot in this. I really am only gonna quilt from like one inch in on either side, because if I get any further out than that, one, I could accidentally go around this curve and then my uh, straight line would not be straight anymore. And two, you just don't have as much control when you're on the outside there. So I kind of start about an inch in and then go about an inch out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my rhythm here and get sewing. Then once I feel like I've gone far enough and I don't have that control anymore, I just stop with my needle down and start again. And your goal here is not only to always keep everything in contact with that ruler, but also to make sure that your stitches are nice and even in their length. And that just takes practice. So you can see here, the goal is just to keep your stitches straight and even. And you do that by controlling the speed of your machine versus the speed you are moving your piece. So if your stitches are too wide apart, then you either need to slow down your machine or how fast you are moving or both 
try to do just one at a time so you can kind of get used to what works and what doesn't in terms of speed control. My machine has a little knob on it where I can change the speed. So I usually move it down to medium when I'm doing this. That way I can sort of press the pedal down kind of fast and but I'm not gonna go too fast when I do this. So what you can do here is if you feel like you need to do it a few more times to get it down, draw a few more straight lines and do that. Or you can use the lines on the tool as a guide. So what you can do is you can line up some of those hash marks with the line that you just sewed over and then you can stay in line. And that's a good thing to work on because one, it reduces the amount that you have to mark. And so then you can just kind of get it going a little bit faster. And then also, um, then you just don't have as much to remove at the end. So that's always good. All right, so what I did next is I drew a line four inches away from the line that I just drew. Then I drew lines in four inch segments. So it was like I was creating a four inch square. And I drew little hash marks two inches away from the side. So right smack dab in the center on each of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna aim for those. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch on that line that I drew. And again, normally I would have my ruler on the left because that just works a little bit better for me. But I'm gonna put it on the right of my ruler foot for this one so you can kind of see what's going on a little bit better on camera. And for those of you watching at home, I have switched sewing machines because I knocked the timing off on my other one. It's not working very well right now. So if you, I just put the ruler foot on another machine. If you're having issues where your ruler foot, you can't like move the fabric underneath it. First see if your machine has a free motion stitching setting and select that. If not, all you have to do is just raise this up just a little bit to give it a little bit of space and then retighten that screw. Because if it is too far down, then it's not gonna work right. All right, so think of this part as like stitching in the ditch. And this can actually replace stitching in the ditch once you get the hang of it. And if you listen, you can hear that the machine is going really steadily. It's not like taking off and going, it's just at a nice medium speed because I've reduced the maximum speed my sewing machine can go. I'm just moving kind of slow as I go through this. Whenever I have to stop, I stop with that needle down. And then I stitch in place a time or two when I get going again. That way I don't have any jerky movements when I get going again. All right, so now I've quilted away from the side there. And now I've got a little hash mark right here. I'm gonna make that a little darker. See, if, hopefully you guys can see it at home. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to position my ruler foot a quarter inch away from the edges where I'm working. So I've got my corner here and then I've got to sew so that my needle ends up right where that little hash mark meets my sewing part. But if I put this ruler right on top of it, because this part is a quarter inch away from the needle at all times, I would end up hitting a quarter inch away from that. So you kind of want to get used to eyeballing working a quarter inch away. Now I found with the domestic that it doesn't really work very well to have this behind here. There's not enough clearance. So what you want to do is try to always be working from the front or the sides of your foot here and rather than going behind if you can avoid it. So first I'm gonna go ahead and start off by getting my needle down in the center. Since this is a practice piece, I'm not gonna pull my bobbin thread up every time, um, but you would wanna do that if you were doing it as the real deal. So now I'm getting everything lined up so that I'm a quarter inch away. And now we're gonna quilt sideways. Again, still making sure that we're trying to keep that nice even stitch length and always keeping that ruler foot even with the edge of your ruler. All right, so I was able to stitch right in to where that point was, and now I'm going to be going back down the bottom again. So now I wanna go down to the bottom of where the square is, so right here. And again, I don't want it to go right even with it, I want to line that up about a quarter inch away. And it takes some getting used to to figure out how you need to arrange your ruler in order to make that happen. But it, it comes with practice and once you get it down, it's really easy. And again, I'm only quilting within like that inner six inches or so in that ruler. I'm not going beyond the outer edges. So I'm just holding this still with both hands and then using my thumb and pinky to kind of move, keep on the fabric and my middle fingers are on that ruler, and then I'm just kind of moving everything along here. So 
until I hit that center. So now we're gonna rotate. And again, I'm going to try to hit a quarter inch away. All right, now we're just gonna keep going back on down and we're just gonna keep rotating that to try to hit that. So if you were doing this, if you had four inch squares, you could make that happen and it would turn out really cute. Now, if you find you're ever getting off, you wanna just do a subtle little movement with that ruler. You don't wanna do a big jerky movement because that people can notice. But if you're like going along and you think, gee, I am not gonna hit that point, it is not gonna happen. You just wanna like subtly move that ruler just a teeny little bit. And then you'll be okay. But if you just try to yank it back in place, it's, it's not gonna look good, it's not gonna work out. And you wanna try not to move your fabric sideways, like twisting and turning it. Because if you think about it, if you're doing this on a big quilt, you're not gonna be able to twist and turn it like that. You really have to be able to work from side to side, front to back. And so that's what you wanna do when you're practicing ruler work. So now you can see I've got my lines where I drew everything and I just stitched in until we got to a hash mark and then stitch right back out to create these triangles. If you'd like to have a little bit more practice, then make a hash mark on the other side of the triangle and go back and forth going the other way. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw another line on here and we're gonna practice working with some curves. So this time I'm going to make my marks three inches away because I want to be able to work on some curves. I'm switching to a yellow marking tool. This is not one I normally use, but I'm hoping it'll show up a little better and it is, so that's good. And then I'm going to do three inch increments and I'm going to bisect that as though I had done a half square triangle. So first I'm gonna mark all my three inch increments. You guys can do that at home as well. All right, so now I'm also going to draw some triangles as though I had sewn a half square triangle. So when we do the triangles, we're going to have a path that we do. And you kind of have to work out that path because you want to be able to start and stop as little as possible. So what we can do is we can start in the corner and we can come up and then we can come down and do this part. And then we're gonna ignore this part for now. We're just going to come back up and then come back down. And we're just going to do one half of these to start with. And then we'll come back and we'll fill it in a little bit at a time as we go. But then that way we don't have to start and stop as much and it works out really well. All right, so first I'm gonna do that stitch in the ditch to hold everything together. This is how I would do it if I were quilting it for real too. Always secure the top and bottom of the block and then go for the insides. So like I said earlier, I find it really hard to work with the template in back of your presser foot when you're doing it on your domestic because there just isn't enough clearance. So what I like to do when I'm doing curves is go from side to side instead of front to back. So this is again where I said at the very beginning that you kind of have to get used to working all different angles of this because you are moving all around but you're not like twisting the quilt. So you'll see how that works there. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this up. So I've got some clearance. Go ahead and put that needle down. Remember, I'm just gonna do one half of this at a time. So we're gonna start off here. And what I'm trying to do here is kind of position it so that it's nice and even, and again, so that that curve is exactly a quarter inch away from the point of the triangle. And then we're gonna follow the curved line around. And curves are tricky with getting them into that corner. So you may have to adjust more with a curve than you did with your straight line. All right, so I've got that nice curve now going down the side. So now I'm going to adjust it here and I wanna go up to that corner now. All right. Now again, I'm just gonna do that diagonal curve and then the vertical curve going all the way through. So I'm just getting one half at a time here. And again, I'm 
I found it real tricky. I like could not get this behind. So I'm always gonna work from the front and the sides of that foot. So I'm just following the curve of the ruler, going up and then back down, moving the ruler and the fabric as one. All right, so now I've quilted half of that. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna quilt the other half of it by getting the side and the front, and then the side and the front, and working our way down that way. All right, for this part of it, I find it is easier to work from front to back, so just be flexible with how you're working it, but pick one direction, left to right or front to back when you're working on something, and it'll go a lot smoother. So in this case, I wanna aim for where my threads all kind of came together. Cause if you miss that, then it's harder to hit it, you know? All right, so now we're going to go around here. All right, so if you do have to work in back, if there's no way around it, what you do is you kind of lift this up and then set it down on back of there and it will kind of work itself out. It just won't go down as far as you need it to. All right, now one thing I'm gonna do before I do the top and bottom of this is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna quilt over those straight lines. That way you guys can see a little easier where the coordinated bits are. And you can also see how you can travel over lines pretty easily. So what I did here is I'm just gonna sew down that way. And then I'm just gonna travel back because I've got a diagonal going this way. So I want to just sew back without having to break thread. And as long as you kind of have a thinner thread, I use Auraful 50 weight when I'm working on this, you can stitch right through it and it's not too obvious that you've gone over your stitch lines. So I'm kind of looking behind me. I can see where I'm going and get everything nice and lined up. Now you do not have to do this at home. I am just doing it. So that way you guys can kind of see where the points should be because I just feel like the lines that I'm drawing are not showing up as well on camera as they should. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the top and bottom all together. So to do that, it gets pretty easy. All you have to do is line up your ruler with where you're working and you're just gonna stitch over and into that point. And again, if you have to make adjustments because you think you're not gonna hit that point, just go nice and slow with your adjustments and it won't be very obvious that you switched directions at the last minute. Now I'm gonna jog over here. And now I'm gonna work going back. This time I've got the ruler on the left side and we're gonna go backwards. All right, so these zigzags represent your piecing and then these arcs are what you can do on the inside. And this is why, you know, my favorite is that four in one ruler. So if you have a larger machine throat and you can fit that in there, do it because the curves for this one, they're great, they're pretty, you can do a lot of great things with them. But if you're just trying to get some cute little arcs in your triangles, this isn't super ideal for it. Um, the form one is a lot better, but again, it's a little big for in here. I've tried some of the other curved ones that are made for more of a domestic machine and none of them are really like awesome. So what I'm gonna do with the second half here is I'm going to go ahead and stitch in those stitching lines first, and then I'm gonna show you how you can do some nice sharp peaks in there using the straight line ruler, and that looks really fabulous too. And then you guys can just go ahead and give this a go at home. All right, so I've stitched down the lines that I drew so you can see it really clearly at home. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my ruler up 
so that it's even with those points going across. And I'm gonna take my marking tool and I'm just going to make marks and I'm using these as reference lines. So what I'm gonna do when I go through all of these is I'm going to line it up so that this second hash mark is even with the tip of my triangle. So that way I'm going to be able to stitch out to the triangle, stop with my needle down, readjust so that I'm a quarter inch away from here and then go into the side. And then when I come back around, I can do the same thing here where I line it up so that the tip is even with that second hash mark. I can come out to the front, come here and then stitch to the side. And then I'm gonna need to travel because I need to get back to a point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch right back over this line and then I'm going to repeat the process of lining up, stitching to the center, changing direction, coming over here and going around like that. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. This is probably, uh, aside from doing the arcs in it with the four in one ruler, the one I do most often. It really makes something pop. It really is pretty easy to do once you get the hang of it. And once you really get used to it, you don't even have to mark. You can just kind of eyeball where that center is. But at the first, I recommend that you make those marks, just line it up from point to point and just make it about halfway. And that gives you a good spot to change directions. All right, so I'm lining up that point again, just like I showed you from before. I'm gonna to try to do it without holding on to the tip here. Normally I would hold on right here as well, but then you won't really be able to see as easily what I'm doing. I'm just gonna sew in, keeping that ruler in contact until I hit that corner. Then I'm going to, and again, normally I would have it on the side here, but so you can see a little easier at home. I'm gonna line it up on the left side or the right side of me, my presser foot, and then I'm gonna aim for where that seam is. All right, so we've got that. Now I'm gonna go and go the other way. Again, I've got that lined up with the corner. The marks on the rulers can be very helpful for things like that. Now I'm gonna head back to this side. And now we need to travel to get to the next bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel down this line that we already stitched in the ditch. And again, as long as you're using a thin enough thread, because you're using that ruler, you're gonna be able to do it without it getting too much buildup or looking at like you made a mistake. Okay, so we're gonna line that up. Again, lining up that dotted line with the point. And then we're just gonna hold everything in place, move it along as we go until we hit that center. Stop with that needle down and then stitch to the next corner. Stitch over. All right, so that is your intro to rural work using your domestic sewing machine. Again, that ruler foot is critical. You need that so that way you're always a quarter inch away from the edge of your templates. Um, Slim is probably my favorite for the domestic sewing machine. So if you just are wanna get one tool to give it a try, I would go with this one because you can play with these rounded edges and try and do a little bit of curves with that. You can do all of these straight lines here you can do these lines here and you could just keep going and getting that as intense as you want. Like you could keep going in the middle and it's just endless possibilities there. Lots of fun. Um, if you're going to try a curvy one, Elvira is a good one to give it a try. You've got a couple of different curves you can do. You've got this one here. You've got the big wavy line. You've got a concave one. Um, all of the ones come with instructions that kind of give you some ideas of things that you can do with them. And again, this curvy line, I mean, it's gotta be like the right size in order to do it. Obviously it worked pretty good 
um, on the straight away here, but this diagonal, it was a little bit too long and it ends up looking a little bit messy. So you can experiment with it. You can see how you like it. My favorite curve is the arc and the Natalia Bonner's 4-in-1 ruler. Love it, but I think it's a little bit too big for the domestic unless you have a really big throat that you're working with or you're working with like a sit-down mid-arm or something. Um, I would highly recommend using the machiner's quilting gloves so that way you can grip and move everything really easily and some sort of a marking tool that will go away with heat. Um, the friction gel pens, I can see them really well here, but I feel like you probably can't see them on camera, but uh, those are what my preferred method is. I can see them really, really well. So again, start with that straight line quilting, get that down first, then draw some grids and just practice going up and down to create some more texture. And again, you could always practice going back and forth the other way to create some more texture. And then once you get a little bit fancier, you can quilt inside half square triangles and you can try some curves. So I hope you really enjoy this. I've heard from a lot of you as we've been doing more tips and tricks on how to quilt on your home sewing machine that you really feel empowered to give it all a try. So I hope you do. Again, we've got everything you need over at shop.quiltaddictsanomous.com. If you've seen one of our tutorials and you wanna give it a go, we really appreciate it when you get the supplies from us because it helps us be able to bring you more free tutorials every week. So thanks so much. If there's anything else you wanna see me do, pop it in the comment box below and we'll see if we can get it on the video schedule. Thanks so much and until next week, happy quilting.